hi everybody and welcome back to the channel so i know you guys probably clicked on the video because of the title which we are going to get to i have a lot of things i want to say and kind of explain but um to be honest i am a little nervous to talk about it on social media so i'm not going to sit here and explain every single detail um of what happened so i'm going to start today's video out by happiness and positivity i think we are all in need of some baby content some twin content some toddler content um the babies are on the right over here with josh i kind of explained this but because i was moving the kids have been staying with josh or they were staying with josh for um I thought five or six days consecutively, so I took them for the last five or six days, and tonight's going to be the first night. I haven't had them in close to a week, but he is still coming over here with them so that we can all hang out for a little bit, and I can record with them, and that's what we're going to do right now. It's about 5.20, so it is later in the day. Obviously, I had work this morning from 7.30 to 2.00. And I just got ready and got clean and I feel better now. So I'm also trying not to give too much away in the background of this video because I have a full house tour coming next. It's already filmed. I just need to post it. But I wanted to get this one out here first because I felt like there was a lot of unanswered things and just kind of gaps in life and our stories and everything that's been going on because I know I've been mentioning this situation for a while. Luckily, um, as of today... The situation is done, but I think it's probably going to forever affect us, honestly, moving forward. Um, and it really sucks that it happened because it gives me a lot of anxiety and just unnecessary, like, worry. And uh, you guys will understand what I'm saying when I talk about it later. Besides the point, I don't want to show too much, but we're about to head to the kitchen because I want to show y'all what I got for the kids. Um... I explained this sort of also in the last video, but I do have a backyard in this new house and it's completely fenced in and there's a lot of room. So one thing I really wanted to get the kids because they love water is like a little water PlayStation type thing. Like I have a table, but it's actually in my storage unit. I'm going to just show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've been sitting here and I'm having Josh go and help do all of this um, because I'm tired. <laughs> but... It is one of these like little play, I don't know, what do you call these? I don't know, like a mat? I don't know. But it's something they can just kind of waddle in. They love water so much. Like bath time is probably their favorite time ever. It's extremely warm out today. I think it's in the 80s. So as soon as they get here, we're gonna do that. I'm really excited. Um, I don't know, just something about this house. I don't know, just I've, I felt like in that apartment, it was just so cramped, and I didn't realize it at the time, like, how, I don't know, just how I was really feeling, but now that I'm in, like, a better place, and I'm just more fit for a family, I don't know, just my mindset has changed so much, and, like, so many more things I'm inspired to do as, like, a mom, I just felt so limited in a freaking 700 square foot apartment, and, yeah, I will just see you guys when they get here. I heard babies! Anything to say? No. Ugh. Ready? Put it together? Ready? Ready? Whoa! Good job! You wanna play in water? 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 Oh, I didn't even think about that. I guess we might need some batteries. Oh no, it's plugged in. Hey, my dude. Say hi. Hi. Say, I'm Zeke. Hi. Say, I miss you. Miss you. <laughs> miss you. Hello. We got Troublemaker. Luke, put that down! Fake laugh. No. You, I know you're excited. Wait, you've never hooked this up. No, never. But we tried it and water came out. 
<laughs> but <laughs> look how cute this is. A frog. He literally said you said frog. Yes, that is a frog. You're so smart. You know, is this just like a pool? No, I, these little holes, water comes spurting out of them. <laughs> well, where does the water go in? Uh, uh, <laughs> Do I like, oh, over here, right here. No, there's a thing. <laughs> yeah, bring your brother in. Oh, he's gonna cry. He's gonna cry. It's cold. Good job, Luke. Good job. I'm so happy about it. Go play with me. Let's go. Go, Z, go. Go, Z, go. Go, Z, go. Yay. What is that? Can you say cheese? Can you say cheese? Say cheese. Oh, <gasps> what is that? What is that? <gasps> Okay guys, so I just got home from shopping because I had to go get a ton of groceries. My fridge was literally empty. I spent a lot of money on groceries just now. So, I am back from that. If you hear background noise, it's because my roommate is out there putting her groceries away. But really quickly, while I have the receipt with me, I thought it would be a good time to talk about Fetch, who is sponsoring this video. Um, I have had a long-lasting relationship with Fetch because I really use their app all the time, and they just keep coming back wanting me to promote their app, which I love to do because I use it anyways. So um, if you guys have not seen already and you don't know what it is, Fetch is an app that is basically just to scan any type of receipt that you have from a restaurant, from a store, pretty much any shopping you do and you get a receipt, you can scan it on Fetch and it will give you free rewards just for scanning the receipt. So basically you just earn points and certain products from certain stores will give you more points. Like for example, if you're a mom watching this, if you buy a certain brand of diapers and you scan it, it will give you like three times the amount of, of points back. The way that the app is laid out just makes it super simple, but as you can see right here, there's some special offers so obviously I would look through these and see if there's anything you wanted to buy in the first place that you can get extra points back on. It's literally just free money back in your pocket for buying stuff you would already be buying in the first place. So if you can see that camera button down in the corner, I have the receipt from my shopping trip that I just took. So the reason this app is different than everything else is because there's not like a barcode you have to scan or anything like that. You literally just take a picture of the entire receipt and it just takes a picture of it, scans it. Okay, so basically I didn't buy a ton of products today that have like crazy amount of points attached to them. So you do get points anytime you just scan a receipt in general, even if there's not anything on there that is like special, you can still get points just anytime you scan. It will give you a receipt summary. Um, and you'll see up in the corner, it'll say how many points you have. Right now I have 2,900. I emptied my account recently to get a gift card. I just got a Visa gift card and I used it to buy clothes. <laughs> I wanted to quickly show y'all the type of rewards that you can get. Basically, like, I suggest getting gift cards because I feel like those are, like, the easiest to use. They have Starbucks and Amazon and Target and just pretty much anything. <laughs> I'm going to have the link in my description box if you guys want to try the app out for yourself. And if you use my code, which is just my name, Sophie, you'll get 3,000 points just for scanning your first receipt on the app. So the link will be in my description box. Okay, so now on a more serious topic. I know this is what y'all have been waiting for and why I clicked on this video. So let's just get into it. Um... I'm not going to use any names because I I literally just, I'm so done with the situation. I don't want to deal with any more trouble. So after this video, we're just never going to talk about this again, but it's a rest. So as you guys know, um, we put our kids in daycare, Luke and Zeke, my two twin boys, we put them in daycare um, of August of last year. And they were about a year and a half old. And up until that day, we had kept them home with us, spent every single day with them, taking care of them. Um, uh, you know, kind of in between going to school and all of that crazy stuff and working. They were with us at home for a year and a half. And we finally were ready to put them into daycare as I was starting college at the very end of August. Josh was starting work. And we knew there was no way we were going to be able to still stay home with them while doing what we needed to do as adults. Because we had our own place now. We had bills. So we were ready to get them into daycare. So... 
this was our first experience with daycare and you know we were obviously super nervous we knew that we needed to pick a place that felt safe and nurturing um where the boys would just grow like school so we probably t i think we toured three places and the final option the one we liked the most i had good vibes from you know i walked in and i got to tour it and i got to meet some of the other kids briefly and i talked to the head lady there a bunch i told her i said i'm a young mom um i had my kids when i was barely 17 and i'm in college and i work so i'm really looking for a really good place non-judgmental place a place where the boys can come every day and unwind you know i told her they're crazy boys they have high energy they're clumsy they're goofy and i told her all of that right off the bat and um i remember her you know yeah yeah you know we have every type of kid here of every energy type you know of every background and we're excited to like meet your boys and everything and you know it was a good conversation so i left that i didn't i went alone to that and I went home and I told Josh I felt really good about that place and that that's where I wanted the kids to go. And he um, had done research into it and found, you know, good reviews and everything was great. So we were like, let's go for it. So I just want to put out there that this daycare was the most expensive daycare out of all of them. And, um, you know, I kind of just, in my thinking at the time, I was like, I'm just going to let... I feel like the price might reflect the quality so you know higher price higher quality and that's kind of what I just told myself so we paid a lot for that daycare so in under a year of being there I think we were there for nine months we paid over ten thousand um, dollars it was basically I think six hundred dollars a week um, was it a week yeah, I mean, it was really, it was really expensive. I honestly can't even tell you the right numbers. I think it was like $600 a week for both of the boys there. Um, so over the course of just one month, like, it was almost $2,500. I want to say, because I paid it once a month pretty much for that daycare. And yeah, it was like $2,500. Like, it hurt every single time I saw that much money leaving my bank account. But, you know, I, I was just like, this is, you know, it's very important. So... I just kind of, um, yeah, dealt with that, <laughs> but it was a very expensive daycare. I was paying, for, you know, thinking it was going to be worth it. Um, so, you know, I started noticing a couple of things after about like a month or two of being there. Um, it seemed like the teachers were kind of like, so we would go in to pick the kids up. So they, we drop them off in the morning, just along with all the other parents. And I come and pick them up, and there were multiple occasions where, you know, they kind of were just telling us things like, hey, Luke, you know, has been, you know, bit his brother today, we're just letting you know, and it was just seemed like very normal things, and I was like, okay, thank you, you know, we've been working on that, He, we've seen him do it a couple of times, you know, it's part of that age, we're just trying to get him out of the habit, you know. I am like a very mature person, I know how to speak, I know how to talk, and I always talked with respect, and I always talked, you know fine um and I didn't like to dwell on those situations because you know it's just like they're you know I kind of understand their temperaments and I understood what they were saying so you know okay got it and let's go home and we'll work on it and I worked on that in my own time and the kids were going through that age where they are starting to kind of like act out a little more and learning what tantrums are and and starting to talk and you know be a little bit more aggressive with each other <laughs> so yes um I knew there was going to be a little bit of issues along the way, obviously, as every child is, and their boys, and their twins, and all, everything that goes along with that. So, moving on, that happened, you know, every so often. Okay, so here's where, like, the bigger issues started to come in that um, were probably warning signs to this all happening. But there was um, a large number of days um where i got called while i was at school and was told that i had to come pick up the kids now um the first time that happened i thought it was a little weird but i did it and i did it the time after and the time after and the time after one specific week while josh was out of town i got called four out of the five days to come pick up the kids and um their excuse at the time was because they had a diaper rash and they didn't want it to infect the other kids and I was really confused because, I mean, diaper rashes are just something that happens and they've had them before and I've never had to pick them up. But one week they had me pick them up four days consecutively. And um, 
even when it was looking better because I was slathering their butts in cream um, because obviously I had to be at school and they were calling me every day and um, they were acting fine everything was fine it was just a normal diaper rash they have super sensitive skin so it happens and um, they forced me to go take them to a pediatrician to get them checked and make sure that it wasn't anything more than a diaper rash which I knew it was just a diaper rash. And so anyways, I was not covered on health insurance because I'm self-employed. And so, you know, I kind of fought back a little bit. And I was like, is that seriously necessary? Like, it's clearly a diaper rash. They're acting fine. They do not have fevers. They do not have any symptoms of anything else going on. It's contained to their butt cheeks. You know, it just didn't really make sense why they were, like, insisting that I could not come back there unless they went to the pediatrician. So kind of me just giving up, I took them in. Um, and it was literally a 20 minute visit where they just kind of did a quick check, got written, like, you know, verbally, yep, diaper rash, wrote it down, signed off on it, and I brought it to the daycare the next day, and they're kind of just like, okay, and took the kids, and I didn't hear about it again after that. Um, I ended up having to pay $800 for that, just for that 20 minutes, because freaking doctor's bills are so expensive, and, um... Yeah, I was actually really pissed because I just didn't see why that was needed at all. And they know that, you know, they know my schedule. I've made it clear to them when they were calling me every single day. And Josh was out of town. So I was literally like, I, it was just a very stressful week. And this was when I was in nursing school and I was missing lab practicals. And it was just hard. Um, I mean, I get it. I will always come pick up the kids if it's something like they're throwing up or they have a high fever. Of course. But a diaper rash, I was getting annoyed. So... That was kind of one really bad week with them. And then soon after that, um, I got a message, like a, like a text or an email or something from them while I was sitting in class. And they were calling my phone, but I couldn't answer because I was sitting in the middle of class. So I waited till I got out about 20 minutes later and I called them back. And they were making a big fuss about a, um, Luke's pinky toe. And they said they were telling me that it was bruised and and like they were just make they're being so dramatic they were saying it's bruised and it's all this and that and we don't know why and I was like okay well I'm gonna guess that it's his shoe because he was wearing these Nike sneakers that I'm assuming it could probably be rough on their feet if you know they're getting too small or something like that and I was like it's probably just his shoe um just I mean if you guys can just let it air out I'm sure it's fine if you can send me some pictures or something you know um, that would be great so I can see it because they're making it sound like, I mean, it, it was bad. So they don't send me any pictures, but they, um, you know, I said, you need me to come pick him up? And they were like, mm, no, it's fine. Just look at it when you get him later. And I said, okay. So I went through my day and I went to pick him up and I immediately looked at his toe where I saw nothing. Like nothing there. We were touching on it. He was not having any reaction. This is where it kind of all came in. Um, I would say a day or two later from them calling me about his toe that um, I got a visit. This is where I'm going to start to get vague because I feel like a lot of this needs to stay between me and Josh and the kids because, yeah. But um, I got a call from, I'll just say like an authority figure um, wanting to talk to me, um, saying it was, you know, an emergency, and he needed to talk to me about my kids, um, and was asking if he could come to my apartment, like, that moment, and I was alone, and I was super freaked out, and I was like, no, you may not, but I can come meet you somewhere, um, and talk to you, you know, and he was like, well, you know, we really need to do it at your place. Is there, like, a better time that would be convenient that you can bring somebody with you? So I rearranged to meet with him the next day with my dad being there. Um, so that happened. And I was basically told that the daycare had written up a large list of accusations against me and Josh and they were just the most it makes me mad it and they also 
mentioned um, my YouTube videos and I was just, I was so, I was so taken back by it. I was like, what the heck? My dad was sitting there, you know, getting super upset because he's like, what is this? This is total BS. Um, he's with us, he's with us and the kids all the time. So the first guy that showed up, um, he was super amazing and he was super sweet to us and he actually, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but he kind of, um, affirmed that it was our daycare without he was not supposed to do that but he did um because i was very pushy about it and i was like i know this was the daycare i know this was the daycare and i know it's because of our age like this is clearly because we were young parents and they don't trust us or something is going on in their in their heads to think that we are doing something and he basically was like yes um it's 100 percent because of your age um or else none of this would be an issue. And he literally said that to us, to my face, and I was literally crying, I was so mad. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just keep the rest of things private. But from there, um, for the next two months, we then dealt with the consequences of them writing that report. And when I say I was just a mess, um, I was a mess. I ended up calling the daycare the day I talked to the guy and um, you know asked them I said straight up I'm just curious why you did that and um, she completely denied that it was them and you know it was weird it was really weird it was the whole thing was weird she just didn't really have like I could just tell she was trying not to say certain things and she was just covering her tracks and I was crying and I was just like you know that hurts like um we've been with you for nine months and um you know never once did you guys voice something to us as mama bear is coming out of me and you know i told her straight up you this is the last time you will see my kids and out of respect i paid them for two weeks because you're supposed to give a two weeks notice even though they deserved nothing from me but i still paid them their two weeks uh it was just chaos so i'm gonna just summarize everything else um yeah basically ended up having to go through a bunch of shit um, just to fight with them. Yeah, and it really sucked. It really, really, really sucked. Um, I was in tears a lot, and, um, we ended up having to work with this other lady who wasn't the nicest, and we could just tell, like, we were, they just asked us so many weird questions, and it just we felt so biased. Um, clearly, I mean, it was just so obvious. Everyone that we talked to, like, I could just tell, like, when I walk in there, they're, I look young. I look little. We're fighting to against lies. Like, they lied, like, bad. They lied, lied, straight white lies. And I had to, like, fight so hard to, like... Because this is a credible daycare. So, obviously, they're going to be believed in the situation. And I was fighting so hard. So, long story short, I am never ever bringing my kids back to a big business daycare ever again um at the same time as this thank the lord for her um one of my friends recommended going to an at-home daycare and i never considered that before but um after this experience i was like maybe we need a change of pace and so i met with um this sweet sweet lady um and I toured her house and she had like a whole setup going on and at the time she was only watching like one other kid so she had openings and she was half the price literally half the price um and I when I tell you that when the kids started there like a week later like they were saying so many new things and like just coming home so happy and just tired out and content like I literally cannot say enough how thankful I am for that transition like that is probably the biggest positive that has come out of this entire situation is that um we found a great great at home daycare system for them and um it's helped us save a lot of money because seriously I cannot tell you like that daycare was draining my bank account like bad and um yeah, I mean, it just made it such a big difference transitioning them to be with someone more personable and loving and caring and sweet. And um, that lady, um, 
had triplets so she already knew how to deal with multiples especially high energy clumsy crazy multiples so she is such a blessing um such a blessing i love her to death and she's treated my kids with so much love and respect and we did explain to them the situation that had happened at our last daycare and she was extremely sympathetic knowing how it is with having more than one baby and having just everything going on in life at once and um literally we were blessed i'm really glad now that we got out of that place because looking back i see all the warning signs i just wasn't really opening my eyes to them because you know I just thought I could trust. I thought I could trust when I couldn't. So that's the moral of the story. As a parent, you just like always need to be looking out for your kids. You know, always have a little bit of a skeptical eye because I really thought the best in everybody when people were not the greatest to me. So yes, that is what happened. Summed up. And I hope that explains things. And that's for a while there, I did not feel like filming. I didn't feel like doing anything. Like the fact that my YouTube channel was being used against me, I was just like... If anything, all we show in our videos is constant love. So, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about the situation. I just truly want to be done with it, but I wanted to tell you guys because this is part of being a young parent. Like, you get so much judgment, and people automatically make conclusions about you with no proof, no nothing. And it is just insane. It's insane. So, m moving on, I'm hoping to never have dealt with the situation, although I still do have a lot of anxiety about it sometimes. So anyways, guys, that is going to be the end of today's video. I have a way bit more happier, lighthearted video coming next, so please be on the lookout for that because you'll finally get to see the new house and a few other things. So anyways, guys, I'll just see you in the next video. I love you all, and thank you for your support as always, and I'll see you in the next video.